Guys, today we all together will test new tracked ATV for the first time. This ATV is quite remarkable because of the two features. First, it's completely self-made machine, and the second, it's cost just a little bit more than $1000. Well, let's see what it can show us today. Let's go! Hi guys, as usually it's me, just an off-screen voice and you are watching Review Machines. Today we have got a very amusing machine for review. Its designer is a confirmed fisherman, and he needed a transport to get the most hidden and distant lakes. But as you may know, nowadays all terrain vehicles are quite expensive, so our fisherman decided to make his own self-made ATV. Moreover, he set a budget. It should be about $1000. Well, it was very interesting for me to see how he managed to make a real tracked ATV within this sum. Well, frankly speaking, 1000 is not enough to make a decent ATV. But it's a self-made machine, so many parts were simply taken from the nearest junkyard. By the way, it's very interesting that the design of this ATV is very versatile. If you want to make your own self-made machine, you can take this construction as a base, cause in this way you will be able to use various parts that you may have at your backyard. For example, wheels from old car, engine from a garden tractor, gears from a quad and so on. That is why the owner of this ATV managed to confine himself just to 1000. Now let's have a look at the technical details of the machine. The owner wanted his ATV to be able to float and overcome water obstacles, so the best here is a waterproof frame like a boat. The frame is designed for carrying 4 people including a driver and some cargo. The total carrying capacity is 400 kilos. Engine was taken from a manual tractor. Its Chinese engine Lifan 13 horsepower. The gearbox and rear axle was taken from an old car. Manual gearbox has 4 ranges and reverse. It works together with a centrifugal clutch, so transmission is very simple. Trucks are completely self-made. They are made of a conveyor belt. There are many metal parts mounted along the track. They keep it in the right position when moving and provide a good traction with the ground. There are two rear wheels driven by engine. All the other wheels are passive. The steering is very simple. All the maneuvers are done by stopping one of the tracks. So there are only two levers to drive the vehicle. Also we have a winch of a quad that may do a lot of good in difficult situation. As I've mentioned, to turn the machine you should slow down one of the tracks by an appropriate lever. When both levers are released, the vehicle moves straight. To stop the machine, just pull the both levers. As all the skid steering vehicles, this one has quite little turning radius. Well, I think it's high time to test this vehicle on a real off-road, in melting snow and swamp. And while it's preparing for a serious test, I want to share my first impressions. First of all, it's absolutely not fast. Maximum speed is about 20-30 km per hour, so it's not suitable for distant trips. And of course on public roads it should be carried on a trailer. Then it doesn't have suspension system, so it's rather tough, I should say. Then I would keep some anti-roll cage, cause sometimes it may be dangerous to ride in off-road. But nevertheless, it goes surprisingly well for a self-made vehicle with a small budget. To my mind, such a construction of the vehicle may be useful for those people who want to make themselves a tracked ATV and who have a lot of useless spare parts in the backyard. The frame and the body, wheels and tracks and so on, all this stuff can be done by yourself in your garage. As to engine and transmission, they can be taken from an old tractor, for example. As a result, we have probably the cheapest tracked ATV in the world.
I strange at the least to try it myself. Cause to tell the truth, I didn't believe that something decent can be done with such a budget. The steering is quite simple. To start moving, just choose a proper gear and press the throttle. To my surprise, the vehicle moves quite smoothly. To make a turn, a track can be slightly slowed down, and the vehicle turns without any jerks. Low gear is too slow. It's used in the most difficult conditions. The second gear is a standard, and the third one will be suitable for plain roads. Metal hooks mounted on tracks provide a perfect traction. I like this solution in particular, so my first impressions about this ATV were quite pleasant. I really like the steering. Well, let's see what this ATV can show us on a real off-road. We began our test on a swampy bank of a small river, covered with wet, heavy snow. In this condition, the ATV moved quite well, and the tracks didn't fall through snow. But it seemed to me that the engine is not powerful enough, although at low gear there were not any problems, and it was cutting its way through the bushes like a tank. Then we tested the vehicle under full load. As you can see, it's able to move quite swiftly, even climbing the slope. But as I already mentioned, sometimes the engine was lack of power. Or maybe it was just my impression. The vehicle is able to overcome different obstacles quite efficiently. Its tracks are equipped with numerous metal hooks, so they provide a perfect direction. That is why it can easily get over any logs and other obstructions. Frankly speaking, we expected this ATV to do quite well on off-road. I think any tracked vehicle can show us good results on mud and snow, and it was no surprise for us. But we wanted to be surprised, or at least wanted to have some fun. So we decided to toughen our test extremely, and we turned the vehicle straight to the thin melted ice of the river. Of course, it immediately fell through the ice and got stuck. The tracks were rotating in water, but all the efforts resulted in nothing, and only a winch could save us from this trap. Then we tried to go on ice again. And of course the ice again was broken, so the ATV immediately got stuck. At this moment we found a serious disadvantage. Unfortunately, there is no any differential lock, so the both tracks can't work together. I think if it had a diff lock, it would be able to overcome such obstacles. The previous tests seemed to us rather boring, and we tried to find something more exciting. Well, theoretically, this ATV may be considered as an amphibious vehicle, so let's find out if it's able to float. There was a small river but it had a very strong stream, so we were afraid that our vessel could roll over in water. Nevertheless, we tried it. Well, I can say that one thing was absolutely clear. It really was able to float, but on the other hand, it absolutely couldn't resist a strong stream and couldn't maneuver there. Undoubtedly, it may be able to cross some water obstacles with calm water, but not rivers. So again, it was a winch that saved us and pulled the vehicle out from water. So what conclusion can we make out of our tests? Undoubtedly, it's a very interesting project. On one hand, it can go off-road quite well. We like the tracks and how they work. It can easily go through mud and snow. It can float after all. And don't forget about the price – a thousand dollars. But on the other hand, of course, there are some drawbacks. The weak engine, its lack of a differential lock, it moves rather slow and so on. But there is every reason to say that this ATV is worth of our attention. Moreover, if you are going to build a project something like this, I think you can adopt some ideas from this thing, can't you? Well, let's call it a day. Thanks for watching, guys. Please consider subscribing the channel if you like this video. It will be many more interesting materials here. Goodbye.